right now if you're a born again believer, if you've trusted in the sacrifice that Jesus made for you, you belong to God. You have no choices anymore because you belong to God. God owns you completely. You have no more rights. The only right and responsibility that you have as a believer is to obey God. And everything that you have and every breath that you take and all of your possessions, they're simply entrusted to you by God to be used for God's purposes as God determines. And so that vote that you get isn't a vote that's given to you by the government. It's not given to you by democracy. It's given to you by God to serve God with. Everything that you have is given to you by God to serve him with. It's our godliness that will see this nation exalted. And the flip side of that is it will be our godlessness that allows our nation to continue to decay and decline into the moral abyss towards which it is heading right now. So we need to importantly and prayerfully seek God's will in these decisions. Israel invited God's anger by selecting leaders without consulting him. I don't want you to be attracting God's anger in a couple of weeks' time by electing people without consulting him. How would you like to be an anger magnet? You know, lightning bolts just everywhere. (laughs) Right across our nation, suddenly a party has sprung up. It's the Family First Party. And uh, Wayne is standing for the family, Family First Party. And well done, Wayne. Congratulations. But God is raising up the church to bring great influence. In every newspaper, uh, Pastor Ian just texted me last night. He said that a a big picture of Ian and Joan and and the the boys are going in the Sydney Morning Herald and uh, the the Australian is also featuring featuring a story on them as well. Now, the, the enemy's tactic here through some of the parties is to try and relegate the Family First Party as a freaky, far right, fundamentalist, conservative Christian group. Tomorrow night is the Meet the Candidates Forum. This year we're having it right here in this church. You just come back here tomorrow night and we put bums on seats and we freak out the candidates. That's basically the, that's the game plan. See, it's all about numbers to them. If we have 500 people and one of those candidates will get in, then as a church leader I can go to them and I can say, remember those 500 people that showed up on that night? Well, I represent them and this is what they want. They don't want late-term abortion. They don't want the morning-after pill. They don't want homosexual marriage. They don't want homosexuals adopting little children who deserve a better chance in life. They don't want that. And if you don't cross the floor or if you don't stand up for this and do something about it, you'll be gone in the next election. Friends, the commission that God gave to Adam, the command, he said, go forth and multiply and have dominion. God's purpose was for his people to have dominion. Dominion is just a great word, isn't it? Dominion. Go to work on Monday and say, I have dominion. Who let them out? (laughs) You can follow it up with an evil laugh. (laughs) This is our purpose. This is what God has ordained for us. He's called us to influence, to dominion, to having authority, to having power. 